learn how to color correct our background and foreground together, how to add in our shadows into our alpha, and how to finally bring in our ambient occlusion. So here's where we left off in 08 underscore begin, and I've just brought in our two ambient occlusion passes for the end of this lesson. All right, so the, obviously the biggest problem with our current composite is that our color uh, completely does not match at all. So let's add some color correction to our background and our foreground to mix these two together. Now traditionally you want to color correct only the composited elements, so the foreground, to match the background. But since I know we're going to be heavily color correcting this background, and since we're the sole people responsible for this shot, uh, we can color correct the background in this case. All right, so I'm going to begin by dropping in a grade node after our reformat, so just drop in a grade. And the first thing, we need to bring up our black point a little bit. So let's bring this up just ever so slightly uh, until we begin to get some uh, darker areas and areas or colors closer to black inside of our image. Now I'm going to turn off black clamp and turn on our... Uh, out of range view just to make sure that we're not introducing too much black into this image. And so we're going to need to scale this back just a little bit until we have no more of that. Now this area up here is actually overblown areas where our blue channel is actually above one. Now the main color correction I wanted to do is probably going to be with gamma and gain. Uh, the brightness curve on this is uh, rather off uh, we shot it bright and overexposed. So let's gamma this down uh, quite a bit to give ourselves a little bit more of a balanced curvature between the dark areas and the bright areas. Now we don't want to only use gamma for this because we have a tendency to uh, begin corrupting our colors. So let's also gain this down just a little bit, again, to make sure we're not clipping our sky here. And we have to be careful with this because we are doing a sky replacement, so we'll probably want to bring that in in the next lesson so we can view that. Uh, but I'm more worried about getting these areas in the road a little bit darker. Now that looks pretty good for the game, but let's actually decrease our gamma just a little bit further uh, to bring in a little bit more of those mid-tones, or to bring those bright areas back into the mid-tone areas. Now again, we want to make sure that our uh, black point is set correctly, and uh, if it's a little bit too dark, we can come in and offset this up just a little bit uh, to make sure that we are not pushing this too far. Or we could, of course, go back and edit our black point. All right, so this is looking like a much more natural color curve for our background, if, uh, if it's a little bit boring. Uh, so the main grade I want to do is on our foreground. Now, before we do this, uh, we'll need to decide where we want to do it, and I'm just going to place this before all of our motion vector information. So I'm just going to move everything else up quite a bit to give us some room. And again, we're going to drop in the usual unpremalt, premalt uh, workflow to make sure that our color corrections uh, correctly take into account the alpha channel from our CG elements. All right, so down here at the bottom, let's drop, drop in another grade node with the G key for our truck or for our foreground element. And for this, we're going to do a little bit stronger of a grade. So we're going to need to do uh, quite a few things. As you can see, this is shot with uh, much darker lighting or a much more uh, dark gamma curve. So we're going to need to bump that up quite a bit to give ourselves some more color in that area or to almost re reduce the contrast of our foreground element. We're also going to need to bring it up a little bit in the gain to, again, push it up uh, more towards these brighter areas that we're seeing inside of our background. Now to go along with this, I actually just want to bring up our black point just a little bit uh, to reintroduce some of these darker areas we can see here. So let's uh, just give ourselves a little bit of a black point, and uh, that's a little bit too strong. So let's dial that back and maybe just increase this offset a little bit. Because again, I want to reduce the contrast. Uh, the background uh, has a very low contrast level, and so we actually need to match that to our foreground. And then uh, later on, we can, once these are two, or once these two pieces are nicely composited, we can go back and color correct them to the final grade that we want. Now this is a little bit too high. We want our blacks to uh, somewhat match here. Uh, but we're going to come in and mask this uh, in the next lesson. So 
uh, I think this is getting a lot closer to what we're looking for. Now, of course, the integration is still uh, failing, but now I believe that the color is not the worst part of the integration or the worst part of the composite. Uh, right now, what the main thing this composite is lacking is the connection of our foreground element to the background. And this is going to come in the form of our ambient occlusion and our shadows. So let's come in and add those now. So I'm going to grab our two ambient occlusions and I'm going to connect them in using a color correct node instead of the usual uh, merge multiply. I just prefer having the ability to uh, change the color with this color correct node. Let's, let's take a look here. And so as usual, we can gain this down to uh, multiply down our uh, truck based on our ambient occlusion. Uh, we want to be careful though because our alpha is actually not what we want to use for the mask. We want to use the uh, one of the color channels. So let's grab RGBA red and once we do that we should see a much better composite. However, since the ambient occlusion was rendered black is the occluded areas and that is zero in the color corrector, we'll obviously invert this. Alright, so now that we have a color correct node set up, I'm going to copy that and paste it in for our other ambient occlusion here. And so now we should have some uh, ambient occlusion on our truck in some of these areas. Okay, great. Now we're still missing it from the ground, so let's actually take the ambient occlusion, uh, let's take the wide pass and let's add this into our alpha channel. So we can see we have some nice ground shadows and some nice almost indirect shadowing on the ground here. Now this isn't in our alpha channel, and when we unpre-multiply this, we're actually removing this because our alpha channel does not yet have that ambient occlusion inside of it. So let's drop in a merge node and connect this up to our ambient occlusion wide. And instead of merging all of these channels, I just want to merge together our alpha channels. And finally, instead of an over, I actually want to do a screen. And actually, just as we did with our color corrector, instead of the A alpha, I would rather grab something like the red channel. Okay, great. So now if we hit our alpha, we can see that we are adding together our alphas. Now, unfortunately, this gives us an alpha everywhere, uh, again, because the ambient occlusion is uh, dark is opposite or dark is zero. So we'll just drop in an invert node to flip that around to make it look more like an alpha channel. And we can composite that in, and now our alpha is nicely showing on the ground. So the result of all this is, if we take a look at our final merge, I'm just going to map that to 4, we now have some of that ambient occlusion appearing on our ground. Okay, great. Now, if you remember earlier, we actually had another shadow uh, actually cast by our lighting in the scene, and we were able to extract that out, uh, I believe up here where we were shuffling these together. And we stored that inside of our ground alpha or our uh, ground shadow channel pass. So if we take a look at the uh, red channel, here is a shadow alpha essentially that we can now add back into our normal alpha. So after we unpre-multiply, and let's jump back to our RGB channels, let's merge in our ground shadow all alpha into our alpha channels. Now I'm going to do this with just a normal merge connected in both A and B. And for the A channel, let's grab our ground shadow, and we want the shadow. And we want to plug the rest of this into our alpha, and finally output only an alpha channel. So if we hit A, we can now see that we have this ground shadow inside of our alpha channel. And now if we take a look at our composite, we have a ground shadow. Now there's also an artifact you'll notice over here. Apparently our ground had a little bit of folding inside of itself or something was causing this strange shadow here. So we're obviously going to need to remove that with a roto shape eventually, uh, but we can save that for later. Okay, so now our truck is looking much, much nicer. We have a nice ground shadow. Uh, we're going to need to color correct that to match the ground shadow on the rest of the background because to me it looks a little bit too dark. So we can actually come in here and let's drop in a color corrector node. And let's drop this in here. Now of course you should be naming your nodes as we drop them in, uh, but to save time uh, during this recording, uh, and so you don't have to watch me name a bunch of nodes, I'm going to be doing that in between lessons. Alright, so we want to color correct this shadow we have uh, 
And so we need an alpha channel, so the alpha channel is nicely stored inside of our ground shadow dot shadow. And so let's just bump this up a little bit. So let's offset this up just ever so slightly. And let's take a look at our final composite. And it's a little bit too gray. So let's actually come in and let's just give this a little bit of a tint and maybe let's lower it down just a little bit. So if we look at the shadows that are surrounding it, let's take a look at the color values here. And it looks like they have a little bit or a slightly reddish tint. You can see that the RGB or the red is slightly higher than the green, which is slightly higher than the blue. So we're going to grab uh, somewhat of an orange reddish tint here. And let's just saturate this a little bit to give us uh, just a bit of color in these areas. Uh, rarely, if ever, are shadows actually a normal gray color. They're uh, actually usually tinted cold or cooler, but with the background uh, the way it is, we have a little bit of a strange situation going on. And let's actually just pull these down just ever so slightly. So I'm going to grab the value and just begin pulling this down until we get a little bit closer. Now we're going to want to also uh, blur these a little bit, uh, but we can do that again later. I'm just trying to set up the composite and eliminate issues as we run into them, as opposed to trying to get everything perfect on the first go around. Okay, so now that we have the shadows in here, we have our ambient occlusion, and we have a much nicer color correction, let's take a look at how we can actually mask this color correction off based on our world point pass uh, to match the top of this truck a little bit better with our background. Uh, because the truck is going to be kicking up dust, the car that we're driving in is going to be kicking up dust, all of which is going to add light to the ground area. However, the top of this, this again, this black area here, should match the black area of the darkest point of our background.